is follow God. Somebody say follow God. Follow God. But this again in Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 and 6. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. And so as a child of God, I have to learn how to lean and depend on God in this day and age. Or life will teach me otherwise. I need to learn how to openly acknowledge God. That includes me sharing my faith with God, giving me those opportunities. And sometimes maybe you, the opportunity isn't perfectly presented itself. That simply means I can openly acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord. I'm open to share my faith. I'm open to talk to other people about the God that I serve. I'm not ashamed to do so. And finally, I have to learn how to follow God. The Bible says, and this passage, the last clause, it says, when you acknowledge him, he will direct your paths. Now, if God is directing your path, that simply means that you are following him. And in today's world, people follow a whole lot of things. We follow trends. We follow things that are popular. That's what we follow. Follow all sorts of things. Do you remember uh, back uh, when, well, not too long back ago, when, when the, uh, the tablets and the, and the smartphone was so popular, everyone had to run, run out and get one. People follow trends. You think about fashion trends. Talk to the kids and joke around with them. And I see the area went shift, shuttle to Adidas. And my goodness, I remember back in the day, that used to be in style back in my day. Now it's coming back. So now everybody buying shell toe Adidas. Everybody's, you know, first they got the baggy pants, now they got the skinny jeans. Now, and, and people follow that. I never went with skinny jeans. That's just me. Too tight on me. And just personal preference, understand. But but people follow trends. Yeah. Told you last week. They, you know, people they get mohawk and come back and everything and, and fade, you know, box fade and stuff. Let it go back out of style, all these things. And so people, that's what people do. They follow what is popular. People follow anything nowadays. If enough people will follow it, they'll follow suit as well. Yes. Well, how many know when it comes to spiritual things, that's not the case. In fact, the Bible says that narrow is the way that leads to life and there are few that find it. And so therefore, we have to learn how to follow the Lord Jesus whether it's trendy or not, whether it's popular or not, and oh, by the way, in today's world, it's not a very popular thing. Only 20% of Americans attend church regularly. A lot of people don't need the name of Christ. A lot of people, as I said before, believe in God, but they don't believe in Jesus Christ as being Lord of all. Think about the popularity of social media. People follow trends. Even down from grade school to middle school up to about 50 years old. Everybody's on social media. That's what people follow. You have to, I have to, learn how to follow Christ whether it's popular or not. I don't care if everyone else backslides. I don't care if everyone else in your family goes the other way. And they say they're not going to follow Jesus anymore. I don't care if your favorite preacher falls. You have to learn that I'm going to follow Jesus no matter what. My mind is made up. I burn my bridges. I'm going to follow him for the rest of my life. We have to learn how to follow him. How many of you know it's not popular nowadays to do so? And this is what it entails as it pertains to the life of a child of God. So what does it mean to follow God? To follow God means to come after him. It also means, get, let me pause right there because think about the classic verse of faith. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, that without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of those who diligently go after him. To follow God means I'm coming after God, not just waiting for God to come to me. Not just waiting for the things of God to happen in my life. Not just waiting for some miracle to drop in my lap. No, I'm coming after God. Just like I go after anything else. When you wanted to be educated, you went back to school. When you wanted a man, when you wanted a woman, you introduced yourself, gave them your number. Likewise, we have to go after God the same exact way, just like you're going for money. That's why the Bible says we have to come after him with reckless abandonment. The Bible says in, in, in Psalm chapter 63, this is David speaking. He says, Lord, my soul follows hard after you and your right hand upholds me. In other words, I don't do it passively. I don't do it haphazardly. And I'm certainly not waiting for you to come to me. God, you've already come to me. You sent your only begotten son. So now I'm coming to you. He said, I'm following hard after you. How hard are you following God? Or when one stumbling block or roadblock gets in your way, you quit. You start serving God and one person says something about you. You give up and throw in the spiritual towel. Oh, pastor, I quit going to church. Why? I got church hurt. The preacher let me down. The us just got on my nerve. The missionary talked about me the wrong way. It doesn't make a difference. I come hell high water, no one, nothing will separate me from the love of God. That's what it means to follow God, and that's why this is such an important and principle of faith. Yes. We have to learn how to follow God. My God, this may be the most important thing. Because 
how many of you know folk and people and family and so-called friends? I'm talking about people in the church. We'll try to discourage you. In addition to Satan himself. The Bible says he walks by as a roaring lion seeking who he made about. It's amazing. They pay you enough of a job. People can't get on your nerves enough for you to quit. Let someone pay you $100,000, $200,000. You didn't walk around and say, you know what? That secretary got on my nerve. I quit. Give my two-week No, you know what you want to say? Listen, forget about her. I can ignore her. As long as they pay me, that's the only thing that matters. But it's amazing. When it comes to things, God, we get so sensitive. Oh, the preacher got on my nerve. He let me down. Them doggone church mothers always picking their mind to me. And you know, I ain't going no more. And we quit. We ain't falling really hard after God. Because the first sign of adversity, we throw in the spiritual power. Give up our faith. So we have to follow God. Follow means to come after him. Follow means to imitate him. Somebody say imitate. 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 The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1, imitate God as dear children. That simply means that our gift is now. We have to pattern our lives after the Lord Jesus Christ. If I'm following him, I'm coming after him. That of all my church attendance, that means I'm pressing my way to the house of God. Like David, I kind of have the heart that says, Lord, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in your house than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. How many of you know there's no better place to be? In fact, the safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of God. And it's the will of God that every believer be planted in the house of God. And so me coming after God, me and I'm fellowship with other believers of like precious faith, I'm picking myself up. I'm going to the house of God. That's what it means to come after God. It means I imitate him. I pattern my life, my character, my behavior, my choices and my decisions after the man Jesus Christ. What would Jesus do in this situation that I'm in right now? I allow the fruit of the Spirit to dominate my life and my character. I pattern my life after Him, not the preacher, not the bishop, not the elder, because they may let me down. But I pattern my life after the man, Jesus Christ. His life, His character, His integrity, His morals. I imitate God as a child imitates their parent. And finally, probably the most important thing, what it means to follow God is I obey Him. Somebody say obey. obey. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 14, as obedient. Somebody say obedient. obedient. Not disobedient. Not sometimes I'm going to do it when it's convenient. But as obedient children, not to be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance. I am an obedient child when it comes to my walk with God. Now why is following God a key to faith, Pastor? Because when we come after God, the Bible says he is a rewarder. Of those that diligently seek him. Never let anybody discourage you from coming to church. Never let anyone discourage you from spending time in your word. Oh, come on, man. You're going to church again. You're going during the week, too. My goodness. It doesn't take all of that. Man, forget them. They ain't qualified to speak into your life. The Bible says that he is a rewarder. He's rewarded me my whole life. He's blessed me my whole life. He's surrounded my life with favor. Let me tell you what. The Bible says the way of a transgressor is hard. He'll give you an easier life if you just follow him. The Bible says that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. In other words, when you purpose to follow God, he will literally bless your socks off. He'll do things for you that you couldn't do yourself. He'll open doors for you that man tried to close. Let me, let me tell you. That's what he'll do. Never let anybody discourage you. Young to old, that you're seeking God, that you're spending time in church, that you're serving in ministry. There is a reward for those who diligently follow him. And also we know that following God, because it involves our obedience, how many of you know that obedience really is the only proof of our love for God? That's why it's so important. Why this is such an important principle of faith. That we follow God, which means to obey him. Jesus said it this way, why do you say you love me and you don't do the things that I say? The only true proof of my love for God is how I obey him every single day of my life. Because how many of you know talk is cheap? You can tell a lie, you can sing a lie. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. And God's looking down, well, well how come you don't obey me? If you're really following me, sir, ma'am, we will obey the Lord. And that's why there's such a key of faith. Remember this principle I learned a long time ago that anytime you walk by faith, you will always be accompanied with acts of obedience. I can give you an example after example. Abraham, how he, he uh, sacrificed his only son, Moses, when he was called to, to, to Egypt and God called him out of Egypt. The Bible said he obeyed, he left, but it wasn't popular. If you're really going to follow God, you have to 
obey him as well. And that is key. Let me give you a little illustration here. <clears throat> a while ago, there was a, there was a man, he had a, a little dog. And they went for a walk in the forest. Talking about obedience and how we follow God. Dog followed him all around and, and he told the dog, he said, I want you to stay here by my lunchbox. I'm going, going for a little walk. And later, there was a fire in the, the forest. He told the story because his dog had perished. Dog died. As he relayed the story to a friend, he said, you know what? As tears were streaming down his face, he said, I told my dog to stay by my lunchbox. And then the fire broke out. And the, and the, the flames started to come right to where I left him. And the flames came closer and closer to where the dog was. And the dog died. And he said, you know what? I always had to be careful what I told him. Because I knew he was always going to do it. He never moved the whole time. He never moved the whole time. Because he wanted to follow and he wanted to obey his master. Could you imagine that? To his death, he obeyed. Wouldn't it be awesome if we had that kind of love for God? Wouldn't it be awesome if we had that kind of obedience? That God, no matter what, I will obey. No matter what's going on, no matter if it's hard, no matter if it's difficult. Let me tell you what, you don't see that kind of obedience anymore. We don't even use the word in our everyday vernacular. But how many of you know that's what God is looking for? If we really going to follow God, I'm going to obey your word to the letter. God, even if it hurts, even if it's not popular, even if it's not politically correct, I'm going to honor your word as it pertains to my life. Because I'm not just going to tell you I love you. I'm going to show you that I love you. How many of you know that dog proved his love to his master? Never moved. <laughs> And how many of us kind of faith God is looking for? That's the kind of way he is asking us to follow him.